Imam's hadith. This is an interesting hadith because I've seen this being thrown around by a lot of people, by the Sunni and the Shia. Uh, so the Shia, I think, kind of lean in on it to validate their 12 Imams. And the Sunnis, it's in Sahih Bukhari that there will be 12 Khulafa from Quraysh. Now, I asked Sheikh Akram Nadwi, I said that, look, on the topic of doctored hadith, hadith that have been fabricated, as an example, I said, how about the topic of Khilafa? Because Khilafa, people, is a notion. It is an, a concept that did not exist in the time of the Prophet or in Arabia before the Prophet. So the Arabs never used to use words like Khalifa. Like they had the Arabic word Khalifa, but it didn't mean what Khalifa means today. So, for example, the Arabs would have had, like, let's say, they would have had uh, the notion of Tajweed, like they know how to pronounce letters. But, uh, sorry, they would have knew that letters need pronunciation, but the notion of the science of Tajweed hadn't existed, even though Tajweed is an Arabic word. So just like Ijtihad is another example, the Prophet uses the term Ijtihad in a hadith, as in Idhajtahad al-Hakim. But generally, the Arabs weren't using this word the way we today as Muslims use the word Ijtihad. So we don't say like the Prophet or the Sahaba won't say, hey, today I did Ijtihad, for example. This, Like if you use the word Ijtihad in front of them, Ijtihad meant... Uh, it's linguistic understanding about effort, exerting effort. So they would probably get the gist of what you're saying, or they might ask you, what do you mean by that? So the interesting point is that Khilafa, the Arabs never used to refer to their rulers as Khalifas. In fact, mostly speaking, they didn't have kings either. Some of them did. I know the famous Malik al-Munthir, Malik al-Arab, and there were some Bani Himyar in the tribe of Himyar and other places. There were some kings. Uh, but generally speaking, they were Qabail, they were tribes. They had their own kind of Nuqaba, their Ra'is, the Ru'asa. They had Amirs. They had this concept of an Amir, of Walis, things like this, and Malik kings and stuff like that. But they never had this notion of Khulafa. So this doesn't emerge till after the Prophet. So how could the Prophet have been speaking to them about notions that weren't yet in existence? Like, how could the Prophet be saying to uh, the people that, all right, all right, guys, there's going to be a Khilafa, then the Khilafa is going to go away, then there'll be kingship, then the Khilafa will come back. Uh, and hence, Ahmad Raisuni, Sheikh Ahmad Raisuni, considered this hadith da'if. But other, as an example, uh, other hadith, like this hadith in Bukhari, there will be 12 Khulafa. Surely, that, what, what does that mean, Khulafa? Like, what are we talking about? People who come after in what? Because the Arabs never, at the time, had this notion. So this shows that this hadith is most likely doctored and made up most likely perhaps during the reign of Bani Umayyah and up to, I would assume, probably the 12th Khalif, uh, Khalifa or the Caliph, most likely in his time, this would have been doctored because this is what it's justifying. Because how could the Prophet be addressing them with notions and terminology that are not even in existence yet? One way out of this is you could say that this was done riwayah bil ma'na, as in the Prophet never said it like that, but he maybe said something like with this kind of meaning and they retrospectively changed the words to fit that. That's probably the best case scenario, in which case, if the ch words have been changed, perhaps the meaning has been altered too. That's the best kind of angle that people could hold on to. But in generally speaking, this appears to have been doctored because it doesn't make sense. Because even after the Prophet has passed away, Abu Bakr, when they say to Abu Bakr, what shall we call you? We, I know, why don't we call you Khalifa to Rasulullah, the person who came after, the Rasul, after Rasulullah, the messenger of God. But they ought to know this anyway. They ought to know because the Prophet's been mentioning Khalifa, 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 Khalifa all these times. So they ought to know that there's a concept called a Khalifa and a Caliph and Khilafa and you're now the Caliph. Why were they, and when they were arguing to say, how should we have the leadership? Why were they not using this word? When they were saying, I know, why don't you have an Amir from, your, from the Muhajireen and an Amir from the Ansar? Why weren't they saying, you have a Caliph, we have a Caliph? were saying, I know, why don't you have an Amir from your, from the Muhajireen and an Amir from the Ansar? Why weren't they saying, you have a Caliph, we have a Caliph? Uh, so all of these things are... I'm not sure what these questions are. So that was an interesting point. I presented that to Sheikh Akram Nadwi. He said that, that, I mean, he said that, yes, it's unquestionable that hadith were definitely transmitted by meaning. And he said, but this is also an interesting question about when the notion didn't exist, how could have there been a hadith? Uh, and he said that is a good question and it would require research. Uh, 